let's try to put them into use. As you can see, all arguments were given the value of 0 by default. We'll start by changing the speed parameter to a random number. The position x should be set to the immediate left of the screen. And lastly, position y should be a random value somewhere on the screen. Let's run the game. As you can see, we have a baby created every second, each at a different position and with a different speed. Notice that we only have normal babies. Hmm, what did we do wrong? Since our game is relatively simple, we can very easily go over all the actions and find where we made the mistake. Instead, we will demonstrate a debugging methodology which I believe is highly effective for more complex projects. Debugging, as the name hints, is the process in which we remove bugs from our game. When debugging, the most important part is to isolate the source of the problem. The most common beginner mistake is to skip the isolation stage. People have the tendency to rely on their intuition and do a lot of self-convincing as to why their original hypothesis is right. This is harmless if the original guess was correct, but can result in quite a bit of frustration if the guess fails. For these reasons, and especially if you're not experienced in debugging software, I would recommend that you push the intuition aside and work the isolation process slowly and thoroughly. Back to our game. The problem we're facing is that super babies are never created. This could be the result of different things. Maybe our custom event isn't working. Maybe we don't use the custom event correctly and give it bad arguments in the timer. We'll start by isolating the custom event. Let's test by adding a call event action in the created event of the controller, getting it to create a super baby on the left side of the screen. Now let's run it. Well, this seems to work. The super baby appears right on the left side of the screen. This means that the custom event is capable of creating super babies when giving the right parameters. It is not likely that the problem is here, although we may sometimes discover that our isolation was not sufficient and we have to feather divide it into smaller pieces. We'll remove the action and go on to check the arguments. For this test, we will learn to use the tracing capabilities of the studio. Tracing enables us to display text and values while the game is running. This is very useful to check the game's actual flow and check if things really happen the way we would expect them to. Remember, games often run in unexpected ways. We'll add a trace action. As you can see, the action has a text box, but instead of working with regular expressions, this text box expects to receive text expressions. This type of expression supports the syntax of standard expressions, but differs in two ways. First, the result of the expression is treated as text, not a number. Second, using quotes, we may put fragments of text in the expression. Let's start by making a basic use of the action. We'll write the text, baby was created. Notice the text is written in quotes. The babies are getting created, but nothing different seems to be happening. In order to see the effects of our newly added trace action, we must look at the output view. As you can see, the view already contains a line for every baby that was created. The lines keep on adding up which means that our custom event is definitely getting called each time a baby is created. Let's make our traces even more effective by printing more information. What we'll do is print the values of all the arguments, one after the other. This way, in addition to knowing the custom event was called, we can see the exact arguments that were given to the event when it was called. The syntax is not very complex. And now we run the game again and look at the output view. Hmm. All the values seem nice and random. The only two values that are not changing much are position x and is super. 
Position X doesn't seem to be the problem because we always want the baby to appear in the same position on the X axis at the left. The is super value on the other hand is supposed to be changing and therefore seems to be responsible for our problem. Let's look into the call event action. Yes, it seems that I have forgotten to randomly decide on the is super value and instead left the value at zero. This caused all created babies to be of type normal baby. Let's change this. Now run the game. Very good. We finally have both normal and super babies appearing on the screen. The tutorial is nearly coming to an end and I would like to make one last adjustment to the game which is also one of the most important bash practices when creating games with the studio. We will add position events to both babies that destroy them when a baby leaves the screen. A very common mistake of novice game creators is to disregard the issue of instances management. Putting it more plainly, instances management is simply the management of the number of living sprites in the game. Each sprite appearing in the game takes away resources from the device. Obviously this cannot be completely avoided because sprites are the heroes of our game. On the other hand, this means that we must pay extra careful attention that we destroy all sprites that are not needed as soon as possible. When for example a super baby leaves the screen from the right, it keeps on moving forever. You must remember, instances are only destroyed in one of three cases. One, the game ends either using the end game action or the user moves back to the main menu, two, moving between rooms, and three, using the destroy action. This means that unless you destroy all unnecessary sprites, resource usage will keep rising, effectively slowing down the game and eventually making it freeze. We'll save our game under the name of MoBaby3. This ends our tutorial.